Welcome to part nine, chapter nine of Project Dracula Analysis. And here we go. So the chapter opens with another letter. It's Mina to Lucy. And if you remember that Mina had had information of Jonathan Harker's location and he was being looked after by the nuns and Sister Agatha had sent the letter out in Budapest so that's where that's where Mina has gone to see her fiance and in this chapter husband is going to become so so Mina's concern at finding her poor fiance there so thin and pale and weak looking and this also is a deliberate parallel to what we're going to be seeing or we are starting to see with Lucy and then what we see in this chapter as well because obviously it's Dracula affecting the health of both of these characters. And we have here, so I've had some terrible shock and I fear it might tax his poor brain if he were to try to recall it. So Mina as a character recognising the stress. And again, as the readers, there's dramatic irony because we're of fully aware of what's happened to Jonathan Harker because... The novel's epistolary format and it's a collection of all the documents relating to this Dracula case. And so we've got the benefit of having seen a fuller picture. Then we have, I can tell you this much, my dear, that it was not about anything which he has done wrong himself and you as his wife to be of no cause to be concerned. He has not forgotten you or what he owes to you. His fear was of great and terrible things which no mortal can treat of. So Sister Agatha and it's... Bram Stoker making clear that Jonathan Harker's Victorian morals and standards are unaffected by his trauma of the sexy vampire ladies uh, when he was staying at Castle Dracula. There's some irony here of I thought it might be jealous lest my poor dear should have fallen in love with any other girl. The idea of my being jealous about Jonathan, well, she might be if she knew that, but she does later. But at this point, she doesn't know what the actual uh, cause was. But she would forgive him, obviously, because of the supernatural nature of what happened to him. So we have, uh, I knew that no other woman was a cause of trouble. Well, it's kind of true, but it's also, yeah... Women were involved, but really it's kind of Dracula, isn't it, really? Okay, so let's go to the next page. So skipping on ahead, there's a sequence where Jonathan Harker and Luke, not Lucy, sorry, Mina, show their commitment to each other. And Jonathan Harker's got his journal with all the details of what happened to him. And in an act of trust... Mina says she won't read it unless she has to at some future point. Here is the book. Take it and keep it. Read it, if you will, but never let me know. Unless, indeed, some solemn duty should come upon me to go back to the bitter hours, asleep or awake, sane or mad, recorded here. Then we have... And this bit, actually, I didn't mention this bit, but this is about the... Fulfilling her duties as a good Victorian wife... Then we have reference here to, she has come and told me, this is Sister Agatha, that the chaplain of the English Mission Church has been sent for. So they're getting married. In the 90s film, they have them get married at the convent and it's an Eastern like, Orthodox Church ceremony. And it's, I know why they picked it, because it's visually interesting and they can have uh, the Holy Sacrament in it and it was quite good. But as a Victorian Anglican couple, they wouldn't get married there like that so here stoker's stoker's version is much more plausible about what would actually happen but i get why they did that in the 90s film and then we have what's the page and the book itself i took the book from under his pillow and wrapped it up in white paper and tied it with a little bit of pale blue ribbon so this this is actually very ceremonial in the way that stoker presents this 
So sealed it over the knot with sealing wax for my seal. I used my wedding ring. Then I kissed it and showed it to my husband and told him that I should keep it so. And then it would be an outward and visible sign for us all our lives that we trusted each other. So there's a ritualistic quality to it. And I think, again, a, well, like a good and evil versus theme here, considering what that journal actually can contains and Mina's level of trust that she has for Jonathan. And we have some irony here of Almighty God. My dear, please, Almighty God, your life may be all it promises. A long day of sunshine with no harsh wind, no forgetting duty, no distrust. So this is Mina addressing Lucy and... Yeah, it's ironic because of obviously what's going to be happening to Lucy. And yeah, she's not going to be having a long day of sunshine. And her life isn't going to be what it all it promises. Okay, there we have a letter back from Lucy as well. And we've got this hyperbole here. Oceans of love and millions of kisses. Arthur says, I'm getting fat. <laughs> what a charmer. Uh, we have such walks and drives and rides and rowing and tennis and fishing together. So you've got a syndetic list there. I love him more than ever. And we have then a Dr. Seward's diary. We go back to hearing about Renfield, who last chapter we heard had been escaping in the nude. And he actually does another escape here as well. Then one night, just as the moon rose, he grew quiet and kept murmuring to himself, now I can wait, now I can wait. So Renfield's mood and excitement is related to the diurnal cycle as in the day and night cycle because of his connection to Dracula as well tonight do not speak even the offer of a kitten or even a full-grown cat will not tempt him I decided I did that because I just found it funny really I don't take any stock in cats I have more to think of now and I can wait I can wait and again it's foreshadowing the rise of Dracula as well isn't it and here he is he's escaped again I don't think he's escaped in the buff this time. I'm not sure. Does it say? I don't think it does. We'll just have to imagine that. Or maybe don't imagine that. That's probably better. And we have an ironic reference again. More foreshadowing. Dramatic irony as well. But it looked into the moonlit sky except a big bat which was flapping its silent and ghostly way to the west. Bats usually wheel and flit about. But this one seemed to go straight on as if it knew where it was bound for. It's some intention of its own. The patient grew calmer every instant, every instant and presently said, You needn't tire me, I shall go quietly. Without trouble, he came back to the house. I feel there was something ominous in his calm and shall not forget this night. So, yeah, again, it's the rise of Dracula. And really, Dracula is preying on Lucy, isn't it? Which is the source of the next sequence where we start to see Lucy's health deteriorate in uh, the rest of this chapter. So we have a letter from Lucy here as well. I haven't got too much to say about that bit. But yeah, another bad night. This is Dracula is preying on her as well. Then we have Arthur is worried about Lucy getting ill. And I want you to do me a favour. Lucy is ill. She has no special disease but looks awful and is getting worse every day. So he recruits Dr Seward, his friend, to go and have a look and see what's wrong. Then, this is Dr. Seward's letter back to Arthur as well. Uh, at the same time, I am not any means satisfied with her appearance. She's woefully different from what she was when I saw her last. So, stokes up the level of suspense. And again, it's dramatic irony because we know she's being... <laughs> you say vampirised. We know that Dracula is, Dracula is focused on her and he's drinking her blood. And so... We're getting some suspense here out of this. It's slow at the moment, though, but it's slow suspense. But we've got that. The qualitative analysis this is of Lucy's blood. The qualitative analysis gives a quite normal condition and shows, I should infer, in itself a vigorous state of health. And then the conclusion is it must be something mental. So we've already said about Dr. Seward is really at the relatively cutting edge for his time really in terms of technology and his approach to psychology and these psychiatric treatments and so he's thinking this physical condition what appears to be a physical condition actually seems to be a mental one and here is a significant point because it's our first mention of professor van helsing of amsterdam who is the antithetical character he's the foil 
to Dracula. He's the complete opposite. He's probably my favourite character in the whole thing. I think he's great. He is a philosopher and a metaphysician and one of the most advanced scientists of his day. And he has, I believe, an absolutely open mind. This with an iron nerve, a temper of the ice brook, an indomitable resolution, self-command and toleration exalted from virtues to blessings and the kindness and truest heart that beats. These forms his equipment for the noble work that he is doing for mankind. Van Helsing is a different kind of scientist. He's incredibly open-minded. He's not... Stoker doesn't present him as someone who's like rigidly bound by scientific dogma. He is... He, I suppose he's a, he's a kind of pure scientist, really, in many ways, in that he's open to everything. So that's why he's so good. So things that seem mysterious, he'll, he'll research. In most films, they make it, and adaptations, they make it more efficient where Van Helsing kind of comes in as an expert on vampires straight away. But as we see here in the original novel, Stoker, do, Stoker doesn't present Van Helsing as being completely knowledgeable straight away. He comes in and he has to do a bit of research and he goes back to Amsterdam and doubles checks stuff and then comes in. Because Stoker's working in the novel form and it's a pistolary novel and he's trying to build up the suspense that way. But in the cinema, you want to tell the story efficiently. So if it's a film or TV version, they can just cut out some of the bits they don't really feel they need for the sake of efficiency. I highlighted this because look at all of his qualifications. He even gets to the point where it's etc, etc, because he's got so many qualifications uh, it just reduces to that but we have Van Helsing and you get a sense of his intellect as well coming through and he does do this quite a lot of French John he will all often like use that as evocative as in how he addresses people Van Helsing has come and gone so we do get this he does come in he has a look and then he goes back and we hear about Van Helsing's visit and he's a of Lucy's health or health I should say then he looked grave but said, I've made careful examination, but there is no functional cause. Actually, I want to do the voice. I have made careful examination, but there is no functional cause. That's my best impression of Van Helsing. I hope you enjoyed it. And, and like Seward, he's not sure, but that's why he goes back to check his books and things. He's not 100% sure at that point. Then we go back to Seward talking about Renfield. He goes back to his collecting of flies, but he changes his mind about this, actually. All, all over, all over, he has deserted me. No hope for me now unless I do it for myself. He's thinking of, he's thinking of his little fly collection and doing his incremental taking of lives because he's trying to capture some of Dracula's power, effectively. But he changes his mind because are oh, you not going to keep flies anymore no city i'm sick of all that rubbish and he chucks it all out the window basically can it be that there is a malign influence of the sun at periods which affects certain natures as at times the moon does others we shall see so this is really linked to vampirism isn't it and so it's linked to dracula it's the idea of dracula being more powerful at night and again that diurnal cycle that i mentioned earlier on then we have, this is interesting because you get two telegrams like really close to each other. There's a day apart. 5th of September, patient greatly improved, good appetite, sleeps naturally, good spirits, colour coming back. Telegram, Seward, London to Van Helsing, Amsterdam. 6th of September, terrible change for the worse, come at once, do not lose an hour. I hold over telegram to Homewood till I've seen you. So, yeah, there's a sudden, a sudden decline in Lucy's health. And again, it creates suspense here. At the end before we go on to the next chapter so anyway i will stop there i hope you found that useful like subscribe do all these other things bells etc etc thank you for listening and watching